So this is Baruch Fleischman. I'm here at the Itikud Elevator Kola. We're reading the book Samuel 2. This is the second book of Samuel. And uh, we're really now going to start the sixth chapter over here in the life and times of our king, King David. The minstrel poet, the conqueror of the giant Goliath, Goliath, the man who took the kingdom, fighting the Palestinians, the Philistine, based in Gaza, and continuously trying to pour out. This is an old, old war. So it says, And David continued to gather all the chosen, the chosen of Israel. He gathered together 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal Yehuda to bring up from there the Ark of God which is called a name, the name of the Lord of hosts, who dwells upon the cherubim being upon it. So this is the Ark of the Covenant in which the two, uh, what we call the Luchos Abris, the two tablets that Moshe received, placed inside of it. It's a tremendous, tremendously spiritual place. So he said, let me read it back again. Uh, he says, the, which is called a name, the name of the Lord, which is yud ke vav ke, I guess, of hosts, Hashem Sebekos in Hebrew, dwells upon the cherubim being, uh, being upon it. There are, there are cherubs facing each other at this time. We're on the top of this ark. They're facing each other. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart, and they carried it up from the house of Avinavdov, that was in Giva, and Uzzah and Achia, the sons of Avinavav, drove the new cart. Now, this is a tremendous, tremendous thing because you're bringing a, uh, what you're bringing here when you're talking about the Ark, you're talking about an interface, a powerful one that lives in this world, between, or exists in this world, between us and the world of nothingness, which is the world of eternity. We are the stage in which the play of, of the Almighty is taking place. They have actually the interface right there. They have the merit to be able to drive that wagon. Now he says, And they brought it out of the house of Abinadav, which was on the hill, and the ark of God, and Achiob went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel were made merry with all manner of instruments of cypress wood and with harps, and with uh, uh, psalteries, I guess he means psalms, and with timbrels or psalteries or some kind of a musical instrument, and with sistra and with cymbals. And they came to the Goran Nahum, and Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and grasped hold of it, for the oxen swayed it. And the anger of the Lord was killed, kindled against Uzzah. Why? Because he, he touched it. And God struck him down there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. And David was angered because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. And he called that place Peretz Uzzah. Peretz, once again, is a concept of breaking through or opening up, breaking through. Which is really what the Jewish people are trying to do now. We're trying to break through the circle of nations and the world itself that is all poised against us. So I'm waiting for the, there's a side note that I'm waiting for the Israelis to start talking and calling in the name of the Shem. They're calling the name of the IDF. They're calling the names of the Jewish soldiers who have faith or building their faith is building. And this is an opportunity for oneness of the Jewish people, which is very, which our enemies are actually causing because we are a very diverse, multi-ethnic, multi-idea, Going on, until this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the art of the Lord come to me? Now you see what we're talking about here, if I use my definition. And we're talking about the ark is a, is a portal. I think that's a good word. It's a portal to the world beyond the physicality of this world. And he touched it. It can only... It's a very special, in other words, that, that actually man, automatically portals you. I think that's what he's saying, to the side of nothing. 
and he's dead. And David did not want to remove until uh, unto him the ark of the Lord into the city of David. And David took it aside to the house of Ovid Edom the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord dwelled in the house of Ovid Edom the Gittite three months. Imagine who this person was, Ovid Edom. Now Ovid Edom uh, means a, 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 a servant, a one who serves Edom. Edom is redness. So this is to understand, or our enemy, our brother, Esau. So the house of Edom the Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed, uh, blessed Ovid Edom and all his household. And it was told to King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Ovid Edom, and all that belongs to him, because of the ark of the Lord. And David went and brought up the Lord, the ark of the of the the ark of God from the house of Ovid Edom into the city of David with joy. And it was when the bearers of the ark of God had trodden six places, paces, they walked six steps, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. And David danced with all his might before the Lord. And David was girded with a linen ephod. This is like a, a belt. Rashi says it's like a belt uh, uh, that girds, girds the waist. And David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the shofar. And the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. Michal, the daughter of Saul, peered through the window. And she saw the king David hopping and dancing before the Lord. And she loathed him in her, in her heart to remember that her father was the king before. And there is a difficult situation. And they brought the ark of the Lord and they set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings before the Lord and peace offerings. And David finished offering the burnt offering and the peace offerings. And he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he distributed to all the people, to the whole multitude of Israel, both to men and women, to each individual a loaf of bread and a portion of meat and a barrel of wine. And all the people departed, every one to his house. And David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, Saul came out to meet David, and she said in the midst of this, how honored was the towards, uh, was today the king of Israel, who exposed himself today in the eyes of the handsmaids of his servants, as would expose himself one of the idlers. And David said unto Michal, Before the Lord, who chose me above your father and above all his house to appoint me prince over the people of the Lord, over Israel, therefore I have made merry before the Lord. And if I be demeaned more than this, and be abased in my own eyes, yet of the maid servants of which you have spoken, with them will I get me honor. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. This is Baruch Fleischman, continuing along with the story of our king, David HaMelech, King David.